Hello and welcome to this week's Australian Stock Market Report. Now this week we're going to look at why, if you're an investor, you should get excited about a recession. Then we'll get into the Australian stock market so I can share with you my thoughts on where it's heading, along with answering your questions and looking at stocks for you. Hello, I'm Dale Gillam, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within, and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Now, before we move on, thank you for showing your support for our channel and hitting that subscribe button. And remember, as you subscribe, click the little bell on the right of it so you know when we upload and go live with our videos. Also, remember to tune into our live Australian stock market show every Tuesday, 7 to 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. Now, this is the show where you get to ask us, the stock market education and trading experts, to look at your favorite stocks and answer all of your most burning questions. Now, savvy investors understand there are always good and bad times in the economy, and it appears from the recent economic commentary that we should batten down the hatches as a recession is looming. But there are two ways to look at whether recession is good or bad, both from a household and from an investing perspective. Now, the prospect of a recession is creating a dark cloud of doom and gloom across Australian households, and the prospect of rising inflation and interest rates is placing enormous pressure on household budgets. Given this, it's understandable that a recession would not be welcome, but if we look beyond this, as to how recessions have affected the stock market, we get a totally different perspective. Now, before the brief recession in 2020 that lasted over two negative quarters of GDP, Australia hadn't experienced a recession since 1991-1992. In 1991, the All Orders Index rose over 29%, and in 1992, it fell by 6% before rising over 100% the following decade. Now, prior to 1991, we experienced a recession in 1982, 83, and in 1982, the All Ordinaries Index fell just over 18% before rising nearly 60% into 1983, and then nearly 200% into the 1987 high. In 2020, we know the Australian stock market fell around 40% in just two months before rising over 80% into early this year. Now, based on this and other data, we know that on average, recessions last around 11 months and result in a bullish stock market. Now, Australia has largely avoided recessions over the last 30 years. And whilst there is a small chance that one may occur in the near future, it won't be long or severe. So what can we learn from the data is that shares and property are likely to produce the greatest growth in the medium to longer term. Now, we also know that smart investors look beyond the current crisis as they understand that a good investment strategy involves buying when the majority are looking the other way in preparation for the impending bull run. Now, right now, the masses are not interested in the stock or property markets as they are fearful, which spells opportunity for those who understand the dynamics at play here. Now it's time we get into what were the best and worst performing sectors last week. Well, the best performing sectors, they included information technology, which was up 7.11%. This was followed by financials up 4.39% and materials that was up 3.72% last week. The worst performing sectors included healthcare and that was down 0.47 of a percent, followed by consumer staples and that was down 0.22 of a percent and utilities, well, that was up 0.54 of a percent. The best performers in the S&P ASX Top 100 stocks included Aluka Resources, and that was up 19.08%, and that was followed by Block, that was up 15.30%, and Wystec Global, that was up 11.51%. The worst performing stocks included Insurance Australia Group, down 4.10%, followed by the Lottery Corp, down 2.42%, and Transurban, that was down 1.96%. So what do I expect in the market moving forward? Well, let's get into the charts for our S&P 500 or Lord News Index update for this week. We'll also answer your questions and look at the stocks that you've chosen for me. Well, I'm sure everybody got excited last week that the market was so strong. It was up over 3% last week. But can I say, before you get too excited and jump in and throw everything you've got at the market and buying stocks, we still need to be a little bit careful. And I'll share with you why when we go and have a look at the chart. So on your screen, without further ado, is a monthly and weekly chart. And on the left is the monthly chart 
and on the right is the weekly chart. Now, I haven't shown you the monthly chart for a little while, but I'm going to bring that up and show you a really good look at the monthly chart. And you can see if I just scroll right back, you can see this dash line comes from that 2000 and on or the GFC low. So really more recently into last month, the, the, the actual ordinal, ordinal index in June came right down to 6581, which is around about a 17% fall, just over 17% fall. But it came right down to this sort of near the support line, but really pretty close to where that longer term momentum is. That's why I was expecting we could see further down, downward move. And this is still on the cards, a further downward move. It's down to somewhere down to this line or maybe even slightly below because sometimes it does go slightly below like it did here, uh, like it did here as well. So that's why I was saying 6,000, well, it's one reason why I was saying 6,200 would be the end of any downward move if we did get it that far. But right now it is looking good. One of the couple of, couple of the other things I was wanting to show you is, I mean, obviously this high here, which is way back in August 2021, seems like a lifetime now. We're almost into 20, August 2022. But you're looking at the high is 7,902. That high there is 7,956. So just slightly higher. So that's our all-time high at the moment. But really, this whole area area has been really sort of the bearish area and obviously that was our first move down a nice deep move down we did rise up come down into this low and we're down around as I said just over 17 percent but really the market's been sideways and bearish now for nearly 12 months so it's been 11 months we haven't had much joy and that's why you know a lot of the managed funds a lot of people's portfolios aren't performing too well there's been a lot of inconsistencies false triggers it's it's really understandable why a lot of people have struggled and why there's been a lot of stocks or people being stopped out of stocks and a whole range of other things and um, you know as I said a bit earlier in the report you know good times never last neither the bad times and so we do need to be prepared for the market not always being um, congruent how we want to trade or how we want to invest and being good at investing and uh, you know to me it is really interesting how people when they get times like this they they panic and they worry and they're stressed about their portfolios going down but at the end of the day as I continue to say knowledge is the enemy of fear and understanding what's happened empowers you not disempowers you and I think that's what we see is so many people when we're seeing these sorts of moves down here people go oh look my shares are falling away my managed funds my superannuation whole range of other things and people don't plan for this uh, in the bullish times when the market's moving up on this sort of side people jump in they borrow more money they throw money into the market but they don't prepare for this and that's on mass and I see probably 80 odd plus percent of people and probably even closer to 90 percent of people don't plan for these sideways moves or the downward moves and if you are looking at retiring i think that would be critical if you're somebody let's say who's 60 61 62 and you're going to retire at 65 i'd be planning all of this out because we know every so many years the market has big dips we know the market constant constantly has dips and i'm just scrolling back just through some of these dips that you see here and if you're retiring or about to retire before some of these dips, especially this big one, the GFC one killed a lot, a lot of people through here um, who were, you know, looking at retire but didn't plan. But we had a lot of people through here getting in the you know, leveraged products, borrowing lots of money, jumping into the market because, as you can see, a big, big, long bull run, even though there were some nice dips in here. So you should always plan well in advance. And if you're looking to retire, you don't go harder into the market you actually slowly, slowly pull back and go for a little bit more capital stable products but as i was saying before on the monthly chart i did have that sort of 6200 as my very very bottom for any move but let's have a look at the current move now i've left all of these on here from you know from the last few months as i was saying you know i thought the market could come down into this blue box and so far it's right there damn smack into the middle of that with that low of 6581.6 points so it did this scenario here where it just went up and came straight down through here now looking at these last few weeks we've seen one two three four five bars last week really really strong and if i show you my little tool here you'll see that it was about three odd percent there just over three percent move it did over a little bit higher than that but it closed about three percent up on what it opened for the week now a couple of things that uh, i won't say it's worry me but are, are of a concern if we look at these bars we see closed lower there's it open pushed up came back closed lower open here pushed up closed high immediately re reversed open high pushed down closed low open low pushed up closed high so we've got one 
two lower closes to higher closes. So that's indecision. The good news is the weight of price move has price higher here than it was here or even what it was uh, back in that last week of June. So price is pushed on, even though we're seeing a lot of indecision. The other thing I want to share with you here is volume. Now volume last week was just slightly higher than the week before. But if you look at the volume, and if I look my little cross here on, you can see here, there's a lot more volume across here that sits above that line. So it wasn't on super high volume. And when you see volumes, larger volumes, there's larger volumes on that downward move. There's larger volume on this one here. There's larger volumes through here and down through here. So I would have loved to have seen this move on higher volume, maybe up to around this sort of level. If it happened up and around that sort of level, I'd be a hell of a lot more excited about this current move that it would be sustainable. That said, we've got one, two, three, four, five weeks from the low. If we get a six weeks from that low, then that really does swing the pendulum now to being this is more bullish than bearish, but five weeks is not quite enough. But I want to take you down onto the daily chart. Now here's the daily chart, and so we can see there, this is Monday the 18th of July, so that's last week, so there's one, two, three, four, five days of last week. Look how low the volume was last Monday and Tuesday. Really low, then Wednesday it picked up, Thursday it picked up, so that's 1.232, and here on Friday is 1.234, so it's pretty steady Thursday and Friday for the last two days, but Friday actually closed lower than open. It didn't push higher, even though it had the same amount of volume as Thursday. So this is some of the stuff that we look at as professional investors and traders. So I would expect our market to probably come back for one or two days at least, because uh, that's what it does. It just, it moves up strongly. So we've had one, two, three, four, five, six days up, one, two, three days down, one, two, days up, one day down, two days up, one, two, three days down. So you're gonna get that. We've had one, two, three, four, five days up. I would suggest if we get a six day up, like Monday, today goes up, uh, with, I mean, obviously we're recording before the market opens, we may get another day or two days up, but I would expect this week we'll have at least one to three days down. Uh, if we get four or five days down, we might come right back down into these levels. And that's what I was saying to you a little bit earlier is, I'm not 100% convinced. Whilst the, the, the pendulum is slowly swinging to being, yes, it's more bullish, this low hasn't been tested yet, and the volume is not necessarily suggesting that the big end of town or the, the masses are getting into this market at the moment. So we do need to be a little bit wary at the moment and not jump early now. A lot of, I know a lot of people have been jumping on the technology stocks because we've seen um, you know, technology sector do so well in the last week or the last couple of weeks. We've seen some good technology stocks take off because those ones did move fairly heavily uh, or move up quite heavily in the past. And so people are jumping on past big winners, hoping that they're going to do exactly the same there. And that's really what I would call the buy and pray method. Uh, not a lot of analysis in it, just saying, well, you know, A2 Milk or something like that used to run pretty hard or we're seeing you know, after pay used to run really hard so it'll do that again. Not necessarily and that's the thing is too many people try and buy yesterday's returns by repeating or going to look at what did do really well in the past and go well it's going to do exactly that again um, into the future so I'll jump in now but what you could be buying is stocks that are likely to fall away. I'm not saying you're wrong I'm just saying unless you've put proper analysis on it it's more gambling and guessing than proper investing and proper trading and you know you only have to look at how people phrase questions and how um, you know in comments on our channel that you know that there's probably not being rude to anybody there's not a high level of knowledge for a lot of people and and i'm not saying that as i said in any um, way to be um to be demeaning to anybody but most people think that just because you know they can put a thousand or two thousand dollars into a stock they don't really need to turn their brain on too much and do enough too too much research but to me any amount of money you put onto the market you should make sure that you've done your due diligence i mean if i said to you today that here's a million dollars i want you to go and buy a property what would you do? And I'm pretty much going to guarantee you, you're not just going to run out and buy the first property you see. You're going to spend months researching areas, etc., etc., etc. And so you're going to put a lot of time and a lot of effort into it. But people seem to throw money at the stock market without doing exactly the same. And, and you need to be putting that time and effort in, not just to understand what you're doing, but also to make sure you're buying the right stocks for you because different times of the market requires different stocks or different makeup within your portfolio. And you should always be aiming to be proactive. But the question is, so where is the market heading right now? So let's just go back into the charts quickly. And I'll draw some more arrows for you just to share with you what I'm thinking. A couple of things might happen. 
And if I use my little, where is my, it's not on there. Let me go and find my little tool. Uh, there it is. So a couple of things will happen. One will be it'll move up it'll, and it could move just straight down and go below, below. That could be the one of the things that could happen and go below that low. So when it does go down, it goes heavily. And at the moment, the market is being more punished on bad news. Now we are moving into reporting season. Uh, we've got reporting season starting in August or very soon, the Australian companies reporting. So if they report under what the market expects, we could see volatility increase to the downside. And that's part of the reason why I'm saying what I'm saying right now. So we could see some big moves down. So that's one possibility. The other possibility is we see something like I'll just draw it through here. We see something like that. It just comes down. It comes down to somewhere, maybe around there, and then it takes off. That's the scenario I'd like to see. I'd like to see the higher up this low is here, the better. If it's right down here, I'm still not too worried about it, as long as it comes down and finds the support above that and then starts to rise. If it starts to do that, uh, then I'm a lot happier. But at this point in time, I think uh, we are, the pendulum is swinging to being more this second scenario. But again, until we get a downward move right through here, um, I won't know. Let me go and change that one to being a red colour so we can actually look at it later on in weeks to come to see what's happening. So I'm just doing a repeat of that, but just off the bottom, if that makes sense. I'm just sharing you the, my thoughts. And I've got plans for both of these, and you should too. Any good investor or a good trader should plan if the market does fall away or for whether it does rise. So if it's, if it's going to fall away, then it could be, then it would be, the plan would be to make sure you've got stop losses on your stocks and good exit strategies to protect your capital. If it does the opposite, you should have money ready and you should have your research ready and your watch list ready to purchase stocks in good areas or the areas that suit the portfolio style that you have. And that's one area that a lot of people get so wrong is their portfolio makeup. People get onto chat forums and they listen to friends or the taxi driver or whoever else and then just buy stocks willy-nilly that don't necessarily fit in with a proper portfolio. And I can guarantee you today that if everybody sent me their portfolio, I could just pick holes out of everybody's portfolio. We'd have this mishmash of different shares. We'd have mishmash of different position sizing on there, on them. You know, some, some of the, Janine and I have seen so many portfolios for people that have lots of stocks with little bits in, some stocks with lots in them, um, stocks that are highly volatile, low, low volumes or low, um, um, you know, high risk stocks, speculative stocks. In amongst blue chip stocks, mid cap stocks, is just the mishmash of a portfolios, and then they wonder why they, their portfolios don't work because sometimes people collect rubbish in their portfolio because they do do these speculative type of buys or these guesses or these buy and pray method um, type buying stocks, but they don't clean them out, and that's the problem. So they end up with this portfolio that really does not work for them. Uh, if that's you, and I'm talking to you, if it, if that is really you, and you're going, hey Dale, that's me, get my book. Because uh, it'll help you sort it all out. It'll go through portfolio styles. My first book, How to Beat the Man in Funds by 20%. You still can get this for free on our website. You just got to pay the shipping. It's right on the home page. There's a button. In here, I talk about four different portfolio styles and what stocks you should be putting in them, how you should be managing them, how you make up your portfolio, and why you need to do it. And I think it's a really good lesson for you. Right now, while the market is the way it is, it's it's good time to learn while the market's not putting pressure on you to buy. When the market it's strongly bullish or, or nicely bullish. People just think, I've got to keep getting the market or I'm going to miss out. That's that whole FOMO. When the market's not super bullish and strong, we don't have FOMO. FOMO is a lot less and we just sit back and wait, which is what I suggest most people do at the moment is just sit back, wait, see what's happening. Get your research together, get your analysis done, get your money ready to get in the market because I think that our market is about to take off into 2023. Now, I could be wrong, but that's what I'm thinking at the moment, that the market is likely to go up into 2023. We could make a new all-time high before the end of this year. Um, if not, it'll probably be in the first quarter of 2023, so a new all-time high in the market, which means it'll be a really, really nice run, But I'm uh, and I'll be really, really careful about saying this right now is some people misconstrue what I say and they take what they think I've said or take words out of context. I'm not saying the market's going up right now. I'm just saying you need to be patient, but I expect the market will do that. But hey, next week I could be saying exactly the opposite if the market tanks pretty heavily um, over the next week, um, which is possible because anything can happen on their market at the moment. We're seeing that things are being punished and with reporting season, we need to be a little bit careful because volatility always increases during reporting season. But that's it for my market report today. Let's get into the questions that you you have for me. 
Okay, the first question we have today is from Crompton, uh, who says, Hi, Dale, I'm really enjoying your content and have just ordered your book. Fantastic, thanks, Crompton. He said, would you and or Janine care to take a look at GUD for me? It's made a steady climb since it's low in June, and I would like to get your thoughts on it for a medium-term investor. Cheers, Crompton. So let's go and have a look at GUD for Crompton. Um, on the left is a week, a monthly chart. On the right is a weekly chart. Uh, look, it looks really similar to the All Lords Index. Too early to tell. So let's go and have a look at this stock. Um, just rising up since June is not necessarily a reason to buy this stock. I need to look at a bigger pitch and you can see it's really volatile type of stocks GUD holdings great company I do like it but it's more of a trading stock than an investing stock so you don't buy and hold this one for long term but you can see it can move when it does move and you can also move the other way as you can see they're back into the GFC um, and looking at some of these other moves let's look at that one so it's a nice big move when it does move but as you can see, it does exactly the opposite moving down. That's the big move, 54%. And here's the COVID period there, that sort of March-ish in 2020. It was already falling quite heavily, already fallen down to there prior to that. So it is a volatile stock. So unless you've got some good rules around this stock, medium to long term, it really is not a long term stock. It's more of a shorter term trading stock, maybe 12 months-ish. Sometimes, obviously, this is a longer run maybe a couple of years if it does really do too well. But at this point in time, it really hasn't shown that it's strong just because it's gone up this month at this point in time. The good thing is that, that low there at 746 is above that one there, which is $7.12. But let's go down to the weekly chart on it. You can see the same situation as on the All Lord News Index. You know, we've had the low there. We've had one, two, three, four, five weeks, exactly the same. Close high, close lower, close high, close lower, close high. It looks exactly like the All Lord News Index, doesn't it, at this point in time. Let me put some volume on it and you can see what's happening with volume uh, the volume was bigger last week than the week before but have a look at sideways sort of movement here um, you know it had has some really good volume through here but not too bad the volume's not too bad but that's probably you know, it is high volume there but this could be just a lot of people just jumping on it because they're seeing it moving and it could be because people saw it in a chat form people saying jump onto GUD it's looking really good whatever uh, and we do see that spike volume coming through or volume getting a little bit higher because people get onto it right now I wouldn't have my money in this at the point in, at this point in time until it really shares with me that it is going up and uh, you know with this sort of move it's been a bit sideways as I said I would want some sort of retest at this point in time because the market is still a bit volatile it is still a bit uncertain and there's not strong, the, 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 how do I say it, the psychology in the market at the moment is not super bullish. People are a bit wary and you're getting people jumping in on stocks because they think they're going to move or they're speculating. We're seeing some of that. Most people are speculating on low liquid sort of, you know, micro cap crappy stocks that we, we saw some last week. We see every, some every single week on the live show that Janine and I do as well. We see people try and make money out of these small cap stocks. But at the moment, GED is a great stock. I'm not saying it's, it's one of those stocks. It's a really, really good stock. But right now, if you're looking medium term, you've got time to wait. Don't jump in early. That's all I'm saying is make sure it stopped falling away before you jump in. So at least wait for a couple of weeks down to see where the sellers are. And it's just anything. You need to see what's pushing back, if that makes sense, because some people jump in early and then start taking profits. And when that happens, you start seeing how big or how voracious the sellers are on something. And if they're not that voracious, it'll turn around and start to go back up again. That's a better time to buy um, from that point of view. But good looking stock. Thanks for bringing it up. Now we've got a, an email from Nathan who says, thoughts on SDI, more pain to go or do you think it's broken a down trend line? So let's go and have a look at SD, list, SDI if I can say that one um, for any, but let's have a bring it up. I've still got GUD on the screen. So SDI, interesting again, isn't it? Look at that volatile stock, quite volatile stock. Look at it. Hmm. Big runs. Again, not really a, it's not a buy and hold type of stock, this one. It's very much a trading stock. And again, look at the, how would you trade? This is a monthly chart. So how would you trade this? What kind of rules would you use to buy this? And we can see here more recently, it's had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months straight down. Obviously, July has been really, really good for it. But it's, it's not giving me any strong signals to say, yeah, this is a great stock. 
Um, it's looking okay. It's done better during since that low in June. It's moved up, come down, tested the low and taken off. But So it's not too bad. So that's the good part about it. I think that's better than what GD was is because it has sort of te has actually tested the low and started to move up. So I do like it. Um, but again, uh, it hasn't broken a trend line, possibly. Um, yeah, sort of. It's done that as well. So it's looking much, much, much better. But again, unless you're more of an experienced person, I think I'd probably leave this on to somebody who's a little bit more experienced. I don't know whether how experienced you are on this stock, but uh, um, it'd probably be a little bit more experienced traders. But I do like it. It's actually not too bad. But again, it's not a buy and hold stock. You need to have some good rules for entry and exit because it can move quite swiftly. But thank you for bringing that one up because I'd never looked at that stock before. But please, um, just be careful. Make sure you set a stop loss on it. It does look like it's going somewhere, but I don't know whether it's long term or medium term there. But at least in short term, I think it's got more to go from what I'm seeing on that chart. Just just on my brief, you know, one minute look at that stock. I mean, if I spent more time on it, I could give you a lot more um, targets, etc., where it was going to go. But right now, it does look all right. But as I said, just protect your capital. The next question we have is from Lamy, who says, "Where does the money go when the stock market crashes?" Great question, but it doesn't go anywhere, Lamy. It really doesn't. It just says it's not worth as much, and so money doesn't evaporate. And this is what I laugh at when the media says. You know, the stock market wrote, you know, lost $2 billion today. And it's like, well, no, it just devalued by $2 billion. It didn't lose anything. You know, the stock market, you know, uh, things things rise and fall in price all of the time. And every time you go to the supermarket and buy fruit and veggies, you see that, you know, the price of, you know, capsicum goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. Is it because the market... You know, the, the farmer, it keeps putting up or down their prices. No, it's just supply and demand. It's, that's all it is. Same with the stock market. So nobody's making more or losing or nobody's money's not coming out of somebody's bank account. They're just people saying, well, the share was worth fix and now nobody wants to buy that share. So therefore, anybody wanting to sell it, because there's always sellers on shares and there's not always buyers on shares, but they, well, there generally is always buyers on shares, but they not, may not be wanting to pay the price because of some economic reasons or fundamental reasons around that stock and so if there's somebody's wanting to sell it this and somebody's willing to buy it, that eventually they've got to come to some sort of equilibrium somewhere whether the person who wants to buy comes up or the person that wants to sell comes down but whatever happens is then they make a transaction so in theory if the last sale was up around here that means somebody says oh the stock market's lost no it hasn't it's just sellers are prepared to take a lower price for their stock for whatever reason. And obviously, over the last few months when we've seen the market come down into that low in June, a lot of people have been selling and because less people have been buying, they've got to accept lower prices. So the money doesn't evaporate, it'll come back because the market, as I said a little bit earlier, um, I do expect by the end of this year, we'll be you know, at least giving the all-time high a good shove. But right now, the probability is not 100% that that will happen but it's looking like it'll do that. But really good question. I know a lot of people do ask it, but um, maybe aren't quite brave enough to ask what happens with the money, but thank you for asking it. The next question we got is from Shelley, who says, I'm new to the stock market. Every stock that I bought so far, I was out of luck because I bought them when they were expensive. Um, I feel I missed out on all the stock opportunities so far for the tech stocks. Now that's probably part of the reason what's, what's the challenge that you're having at the moment is. But anyway, I'll keep going on on your question. She says, I believe having 75K yearly income would be a good investment. So I want to plug all my savings into the stock market. I know this sounds a bit dull, but I would like to know if I should learn investing or let somebody else more capable like a financial advisor to do it for me. Please share your thoughts. I'm kind of tired of searching for good stock to buy and losing all the good opportunities. <sighs> the only thing that's missing is your education because can I say that's the only reason why you're in the position you are. Now, you, you may want to use a good financial advisor. I have no issue with that, and I do refer people through to financial advisors, but it just depends on do you really want to have somebody else manage it for you or do it yourself. A financial advisor is going to put you into managed funds. That's what they're going to do. Financial advisors aren't stock market experts like Janine and I are. They are people that put your money somewhere and help you manage it, and they do a great job. Uh, and not enough people use financial advisors, so I'd encourage people to do that. But they're more for people who don't want to be active in their portfolio management. You obviously have because of what you're um, put your hand up for. You've been trying, but what you've been doing 
is the, the stocks that you've been buying have just been the wrong stocks for you because the level of knowledge that you have on them. So, you know, they may not have been, you know, overvalued or they'd be probably, if you're buying tech stocks at the wrong time, they've all fallen heavily. And the probably reason why you bought them is because those stocks in the prior year had been doing really, really, really well. So you were trying to get on the same returns as yesterday. So you're making all the same mistakes, or my guess is that you're making the same mistakes as most people. You know, they see stocks rise up and, and we've, I quote, a few, you know, like AT Milk, you know, people see a stock moving up and moving up and moving up and then eventually people have seen it all moving up all this far, get into it and then it just peaks and then comes back down again and then they go, oh. Whereas that's, you know, you should be looking for other stocks. If you have the right knowledge, you wouldn't have got into those situations. And I think, you know, having $75,000 a year income from the stock market's great. I don't think you should have all your money in the stock market. You do really need to diversify and have property and other assets. You shouldn't put everything you've got into one investment class. That's not necessarily wise um, diversification on your portfolio. Um, so I would suggest you, you do that, but I don't know how much money you do have. Um, and I don't need to know how much money you have. That's up for you, but you do need to make sure that you think about how you break up your portfolio. All too often I see people doing all, you know, like it's basically, you know, all their money go in. You don't have to go to the casino to do that. Um, and I was reminded today, I saw something about somebody talking about Storm Financial on something, and I remember that from the GFC. So many people put all of their money into Storm Financial and then borrowed money on that, and they got them to leverage into other managed funds and everything else. And we know what happened with Storm Financial and the GFC and everything melted down because people did that all in one strategy, and you can't think of that. Every time you invest, you always got to think of what if. It's not what if it goes up. It's what if it goes up, what if it goes down. Down. Always think of both sides of it, and, and the majority of people that we get to us who have lost money on the market or haven't done really well, never thought of the what if it goes down. They just think oh, it's going to go up. You know, I've done this, I've done that. Somebody's told me these stocks to buy, so it's got to go up. Stock market doesn't do that. It's it's, it's going to be a market where it goes up, it goes down, it goes sideways, and you need to be prepared for whatever it's doing, whether it's up, down, or sideways. That's when I do my market reports. I'm always saying. Well, I think the market's going to do this, but if it doesn't, it could do this. And, and some people get frustrated with it, saying, well, just pick away, Dale. Tell me it's going up and it's going up to 7,000 points, the, the stock market. Or tell me BHP is going to $60. Don't just say it could do this or it could do that. At the end of the day, smart investing, smart in tra trading is having a set of rules and repeatable rules that you can manage that will help you understand whether the what you're trading or what you're investing in goes up or down. What do you need to do and have the decision made before it actually happens? Again, I, I, just buy my book. It'll help you understand straight away what you did wrong and how you can improve on what you're doing. And after reading my book, if you're still unsure about whether you should be managing money and putting it into the stock market, then go and see a financial advisor. What do you got to lose? It's pretty simple. So if you haven't got my book, get on my website, wealthwithin.com.au homepage. My first book is for free, just pay the shipping. So that's how to beat the managed funds. You can get it for free, just pay the shipping and it'll help you a hell of a lot. But anyway, thank you for sending your question and thanks everybody for sending in your questions. And i really like to thank people that put some really nice comments about last week's video. I know a lot of you put some comments and I got some emails from saying, hey, it's one of the best ones you've done. So thank you very much for your support. It really does help me, um, not just, gives me a little bit more encouragement each and every week when you're doing that because you know, obviously occasionally we get some of these um, people that you know are less than um, smart and they do like to you know be negative etc so it's great hearing positive comments so if you're sitting here um, you know watching this show give me a big thumbs up stick it down it doesn't take you too long I'll sit there and wait for you if you like you just got to move your pointer down just a little bit to where the big thumb is and click it on it right now it only takes you two seconds it doesn't cost you many money just roll your pointer down click on like Love you to do that because that really does help us along with putting nice comments on on the uh, on our chats down the bottom. So please do that. But like each and every week, we can't answer every single person's questions. It's just not possible. Um, we we can't do that. But remember, the best way or the best chance you have of getting your questions answered is to publicly subscribe to our channel and type your question below in the comment section. So please do that. Now remember that here on this channel we do these Monday market reports each and every week. So make sure you put your questions down so before we do it next Monday. We also do a live stream every Tuesday night 7 to 8 p.m. So remember, hit the subscribe button now, click the bell on the right of it so you know when we go live. Give us a huge big thumbs up. 
type your comments saying hey Dale keep up the great work we'd love to hear more from you that's it for me I'm Dale Gillen the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within goodbye good luck and good trading <laughs>